Hi there and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be looking at the text to image stable diffusion element of Photop which is now included. So let's start off by creating a new project and I'm just going to select as usual I'll just start with some template here this is fine 1080p click create. The images that the text to image generates uh, 1024 by 1024 pixels so as long as you've got a canvas that's at least that big you're good to go so down here in the bottom of the toolbar you can see the letters tex this is the icon for the text to image stable diffusion if you don't see that here go up to your window option go more and then select text to image so i'm going to click on it and let's see what we get i'll talk through this interface quickly so forget the API key bit at the top, we're just going to stick to generate at the moment because that's slightly more advanced. Now the model, we've got DALI and Stable Diffusion. We're going to stick with the Stable Diffusion at the moment because it's the one that needs the least setup. We can just get going with it as DALI has some user side setup that you need to do. It's not complicated, but I'm going to save that for another video. And then underneath you've got your prompt box where you type in a description of what you want it to try and generate. Then underneath that, a size option, which as I previously mentioned, 1024 by 1024 is the maximum resolution that you can generate these at. And then one other option um, saying in paint the master area of a layer. Uh, in painting is, is quite an interesting little subject, but I will go into that in its own video. So for now, I'm going to stick to the absolute basics. So the prompt already comes with a pre-filled in description ready for you to try and just see what happens. So all you need to do is click create and it will generate a small preview image under here um, that is wacky normally. It's normally a bit strange, especially the prompt like this. So as you can see, you click it once and it instantly puts it into the document as a smart object. Now sometimes it puts it behind the background layer for some reason and if that happens just simply drag it to the top. So we can click create again and every time you click create it's going to give you a different generation based on your description and it's up to you how long you want to spend clicking and checking the results out because some of them are just like this one it's just completely messed up uh, it's just the look of the draw with this um, sometimes you get kind of what you're looking for sometimes you get nothing like what you're looking for one thing to note though is when you click the create button if you're in the um, <laughs> see that's more like what the prompt's asking for I'll go riding a bike and it just shows you now if you're on the free version every time you click create there's a short countdown timer um, that makes you wait until you can generate another image but on the paid version like this you can just keep clicking create and um, you don't have to wait that time but it's not too bad even if you do have to wait so once we've got our prompt here I'm going to delete it and you just type any text in here you want simple descriptions work fine but as I want to do some food photography kind of thing I'm going to introduce a couple of basic photography terms so I want a cheeseburger but instead of just typing a cheeseburger I'm going to put macro food photography of a cheeseburger I can type now macro means close up and food photography it's just giving it more direction as to kind of a style so hopefully we'll get a nice close-in shot of a juicy cheeseburger so let's click create but again it's kind of fickle it doesn't always give you what you want but when it does it's really good so that's a really good image I like that one look at that that's that's actually pretty photo real that's um it's very good actually so let's just click create a couple more times oh yeah the trouble is when you get to good results like this it gets hard to choose which one you like so you can always yeah and no, i like the first one i think it's a little bit more balanced let's just try another food so we'll keep the first part of the prompt the same macro food photography of uh pepperoni pizza click create bring that into the canvas and the beauty of this is it just adds it to the canvas as a smart object as you can see into the document now I've seen that a bit larger I don't like it there's too much out of focus so I can just delete that just click create again and you just go through this process if you're trying to find something specific you can just keep going through this cycle of um, tweaking the prompt 
maybe creating, click and create. Now that's nice. I can tell already I'm going to like that one more. It's more of a, yeah, it's close in enough so you can see the details, but it's not so close in that you lose sight of what it actually is. So that's, that's a good option, that pizza there. And let's just try a dessert. Once we've got some in savory, now let's try some in sweet. So go off a huge chocolate cake with strawberry or with strawberries. Click create and let's see what this gives us. Ooh, that looks nice. Let's see what that's like in the document. That looks tasty. I mean, this is um, completely look of the draw at the moment because the version of this, the stable diffusion that's baked into Photopea, you've got very little options. Um, if you were using like the full, full um, external stable diffusion system, you'd be able to do things like create seeds, um, which would let you reproduce exactly the same images again. Um, so you could give that to someone else. But, you know, it's just going to make it too complicated. So in Photopea, you've got this very simple option. So it's a bit of a look of the draw, but that makes it quite fun. So you just keep clicking around and seeing what you get. That's that's nice. I much prefer that one, so I'm going to keep that. That was a really nice shot. And that one, I'm going to get that in the bin. So I'm going to just hide that burger for the moment. Now I'm just going to close this or minimize this stable diffusion window by clicking on the TX again. So now you've got your food object in the in the document as a smart object or whichever object you create it doesn't have to be food and I just do some basic retouching now normally so I'll just take a look for anything that I think is a bit messy or out of place and either with my clone tool or the healing brush tool I just go around and start just trying to zap some bits so I've got my healing brush tool here set to current and below and I've got a blank layer above the image um, so that I'm working non-destructively and that's a smart object as well the chocolate cake so you can't work directly on that layer without rasterizing it but that's good because it means you can resize it up and down and it won't lose quality so you can go around and heal them with a spot healing brush this is so you just have to tap where you want and it will just Get rid of those little bits so i'm just going around just don't want to go too mad on this because something like um food like this it can start to look very artificial if you take too much away but i'm just showing you sort of what i do go around get the most obvious crumbs and little specks of dust from the plate and things like that okay i want it to look nice but not too perfect and there's this big crumb down here i'll see if it will take care of that yeah that's done a good job there's a strange little highlight here on the side which is just catching my eye in a bad way so I'll just get rid of that okay strawberries look good maybe we just go over the top okay so that was just that was just a really basic quick retouch and from this point on you could do any other enhancements you wanted like uh, contrast color enhancements all the kind of basic stuff just to make it a little bit your own maybe we can um, Enhance the vibrance of it. Get that really popping. Just a little bit. It's already quite contrasty and quite saturated, so if you push it much more, you'll start to blow out the um, highlights and degrade the image. So I'm going to leave that one here, and that's just an idea to show you how quick and easy it is to get images, especially really nice food and drink images generated within Photopea and then you can just do your retouching and your editing straight on the top of them.